Welcome to part one of the Open Coop build series. We'll be talking about sizing your structure, the metal needed for the base frame, welding and prepping the base frame for the greenhouse structure, a layout of the base frame, and the installation of the greenhouse onto the base frame. Be sure to check out our website, opencoop.net, where you can find the forum so we can share ideas and production methods, and also access to the plans, which it will be a downloadable PDF link. The first thing that you're going to want to figure out is the dimensions that you want your interior chicken house to be, or essentially how many birds you'll put in each coop. Our house measures 21 by 36. This allows us enough space to do anywhere from 500 to 750 birds. So here we are laying out the first pieces of the main base frame. We ended up using three by three inch, three sixteenths thick square tube. Um, this is pretty heavy duty. We wanted something that would withstand pretty much any wind. It's not gonna come off the ground. Uh, extremely rugged, will last forever. Uh, this did cost us around $800 per house that we built. Uh, you could definitely probably reduce this size to maybe a two by two by eighth inch thick um, and probably cut that cost down more than half, but we wanted something a lot more sturdy and heavier. So once you get your square tube laid out, you'll then need to mark your spacing for your stubs. The stub is what the actual greenhouse will connect to to the base frame, completing the, the connection to the structure. We ended up working with our greenhouse supplier and basically what they did was they took 1.9 inch outer diameter 13 gauge galvanized round tube and they cut them into 12 inch pieces um, and then they also drilled two quarter inch holes three inches from either side and all of this is in the plans on page 11. You'll want to weld your stubs the same distance that your greenhouse hoops will be spaced at. So for example, ours are every four feet. You'll wanna make sure that they're square and plumb when you weld them. Next, we're welding up what's called the grain bin support legs. This will support the, the main truss structure on the back of the uh, open coop. So we're using three inch by three inch square tube stock with some 3 16 flat plate. Um, the sizing and dimensions can be found on page nine. So we're using the flat plate to add more welding surface area so that the, that will cup onto the bottom of your base frame uh, and give you a lot of support and, and welding surface area. This is the finished product. You can see on top there's also a welded piece of flat steel and that's just to give the leg of whatever grain bin you use a little bit more area to sit on top of and, and weld that too as well. Once you get your grain bin support legs welded up, there should be four of them. You're gonna wanna space them out onto your base frame according to the size of what your grain bin support system needs to be. All these dimensions for what we did are in the PDF. And you can see how they slide on and those flat bars give you a lot more surface area to weld onto the base frame. Here I'm cutting notches out so I can easily bend the end of the base frame to make a ski. It's just two opposing 22 and a half degree angles cut out so that you can bend it to a 45. After I cut and bend it, I then weld it closed so it won't come undone. You don't have to use a plasma cutter. You can also use an angle grinder to cut these notches out. And if you have thinner wall base frame square tubing, you could probably just bend this by hand or heating up. You can also see in the foreground there on the, the base frame, there's two 12 inch piece flat bars welded on either side. That's because square tube only comes in 24 foot sections and each leg of the bottom of the base frame is 48 feet total. So this is how we couple those legs together. Um, and I, we just put them together and weld them up, uh, making one whole leg. 
You could obviously bolt this, um, but we decided to weld as it's a lot faster and stronger of a connection. Once you have the legs welded, you can find a site to where you're gonna build the rest of the project. Put your legs out somewhat evenly spaced and you're just gonna do the cross crisscross diagonal method to make sure that they're fairly square. You wanna get it somewhat close. Uh, it will just make the rest of the build a lot easier and putting the frames on and whatnot. Once you get your base frame squared up, it's basically just assembling the greenhouse from here on out. So this is where you're gonna to wanna to put the coupler piece in the bottom of the bows. And again, this will be on page 11, so you can see the dimensions. And you're just gonna slide that coupler piece into the stub that you welded onto the base frame. And uh, making sure that the holes are in the same orientation so that they align and bolt together properly. Here's a closer shot of taking the bow with the coupler piece and sliding it into the stub of the base frame. Once you get all your hoops assembled, you're just gonna go, going to be continuing to install the rest of your greenhouse, and which you should have instructions from your supplier. So here's us installing the ridge purling. So here we're putting the baseboards on the bottom of the chicken house. We're taking a quarter inch drill bit and going through those two quarter inch holes on the bottom of your bow and then through the wood to match up the uh, holes. And then you're putting those quarter inch bolts so that secures the, the wood to the base frame and the coupler inside the stub to the bottom of the bow of the, the greenhouse, making it a very strong and secure attachment. This part is optional. You could just leave the baseboards off if you opt to have a more of a open day range system where the birds can go in and out of the coop as they please. And maybe you have livestock guardian dogs or you have uh, poultry netting around the coop itself. We keep our birds fully enclosed for the best predator protection. So we're continuing to put and install the top trusses of the greenhouse frame. In the foreground, we're installing the bottom rail of the end wall. And it's also what we got from our greenhouse supplier. Uh, it's two inch outer diameter galvanized steel uh, that gets attached to either end of the first and last bows of the greenhouse. This will also become the base for the end wall frame and then also support the rubber strapping that goes along with the house as it contours the ground, which also keeps the chickens in. And here we are framing up the end wall. Uh, we've done a little bit of everything. We've welded metal, uh, but the, the quickest and easiest thing is to use two by fours. They make specific hardware to attach two by fours. Um, you can do that, or we've also used this pipe strap uh, with two screws. We're also in the background putting up the hip board. This is what your roll up uh, side walls will be attached to and also what the greenhouse plastic will be attached to with wiggle wire. Obviously the dimensions of your end wall framing is gonna change with whatever doors you use. 
on the back side of the house or the front side, depending on which way you pull it, is where we put double doors in. And this makes for loading up birds for slaughter a lot quicker and easier. Um, we got some salvage doors from Home Depot uh, for free from our neighbor, which is super nice. Um, you can obviously make whatever door you want and however big or small that you want. Um, this is really not supporting anything, so you could even leave it open and just put plastic, um, whatever works for you. So we use plywood sheathing on this house. We use a lot of different stuff, just ranging from just plastic to V-match boards to metal siding. Uh, you can just do whatever you want, whatever you find cheapest at the time is what we usually do. We do like using wood. It's just easy to attach, adds a little bit more rigidity and makes it easy to attach electrical or any other kind of supplies you need to attach to it further along in the project. So now we're pretty much ready for a greenhouse plastic. We've done this a lot of different ways too. The best method we've found is to take a long piece of metal and stick it through the roll of the greenhouse plastic. And you can actually just use two people on either side walking on top of uh, the, the purling of the greenhouse and rolling it along the ridge beam. Uh, this, this is the two person method and it seems to be the best way to get it nice and square and tight. You don't need a tractor. This just makes it easier for lifting up. So you can see we take the end and we attach it with a couple pieces of wiggle wire channel just to secure it on the end. And we're just going to roll it along that ridge beam or ridge purling as we climb along the uh, another piece of purling. This makes sure this keeps it nice and square um, and it's the best method that we found to do it, uh, especially if you are in windy conditions. This works pretty well. Now uh, these are supports that we added and, and got from our greenhouse supplier. Um, I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes. It definitely seems to, to keep the bottom braced a little bit better as you're moving the house. Um, so you can see here, we're just installing them with clamps and they attach about 18 inches from the bottom of the bow and then to the bottom um, cord of the truss of the greenhouse. Um, Next thing that we're going to do is to weld a brace on all four corners of the inside of the building. This is really going to help sure the building up for hard maneuvers around the farm. And what we used was a galvanized piece of steel from the greenhouse supplier and we bent them um, to be able to weld them to the bottom of the uh, base of the greenhouse. You could use any metal really, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is a very important step to ensuring rigidity of the house while moving. So that's going to sum up part one of the video build series. Make sure to check out part two as we weld the grain bin support structure and other remaining welding jobs for the project. We'd like to thank the Northeast SARE the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education for help sponsoring this project. Without their help, 
this open source video series would not be possible. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the video.